When most people talk about site visits and in visiting site, they're thinking about safety. So making sure you've got the correct PPE, making sure that you're being safe on site. And most of it, to be fair, is a little bit of common sense. No one really goes into detail about how do you check the drawings? How do you make sure what you're seeing on site is correct? Make sure nothing's missed. So how do I go about seeing site visits and some pro tips for allowing me to take the photos that I need, plus inspecting the site effectively, because it's more than just looking at drawings. My name is Brendan, your structural engineer. Now let's get into it. When you first come to site or even before you come to site, making sure that you're familiarizing yourself with the drawings. So it means that you understand what you're looking at. And most of the time it would be good if you've done some sort of design or analytics behind it, because it means that you know how the design works and how it should be working. So you can pick up on things that aren't actually looking quite right. What you don't want to be doing is just coming to site and that's the first time you see those drawings. Structural drawings can be quite a lot. They can be complicated and expansive. So how do you know you're checking things effectively? So making sure that you have a little bit of preparation before you come to site. It might be even what areas you need to look out for, what are the critical things that you're worried about, and what's some areas that you can avoid or stuff that you don't really care about as well. So identifying the critical locations and what you really need to be inspecting. When you are there, it's not also just about inspecting the things that are on your list. Making sure that you're keeping your eye on a swivel because sometimes you can spot things that other people have missed. There's some really good examples of this, such as the Hilton walkway collapse, where many people observe some of the damages that were actually occurring to the walkway prior to it being covered up. And it wasn't specifically mentioned as it wasn't their part to look after. If those people had actually been looking out for it, who knows, they may have actually been able to stop this tragedy. So it's making sure that you're looking beyond the areas that actually may be inspecting. You may see safety violations in some areas that were worth bringing up to make sure they're actually addressed, or you may see other areas that are not specifically around your location. Now, just because you're asking a question doesn't mean it's wrong, but if something looks odd, make sure you speak up. It's a responsibility for everyone on site. When you first come to site, make sure you note the date, the time, Who's with you on that inspection? Because you may actually make comments to some of them. So you know, who do you actually make comments for, for some of the things that needed to be rectified that you immediately saw, but also it allows you to recall things better. But what you should also be doing is taking photos. As a lot of time you may have missed something and you need those photos. So taking more photos than you think you need is really important. But it's not just taking random photos, making sure that you're doing it in a somewhat of a systematic way. So there's a couple of ways that I like to do this. I normally like to start at one area of the building, and going around the whole site that I need to inspect. And by doing this, I can also take a photo on the plans of where I am with me pointing to it and saying, this is where I am before I start taking a series of photos in a single location. This also allows you to do a couple of series of photos as well that I found very beneficial. You take a photo from far away, and then you take a photo of closer up. So you've got the overall picture of where you are, then you bring it into a closer location so you can actually see the specific thing that you were related to. So whether you actually thought it was right or wrong, making sure you're taking those additional photos. One thing that is key to this, and it's probably really before this though, is making sure that when you do have something specified on a drawing, especially in the concrete drawing, making sure it's of a similar pattern. So if you've got things at 200 centers, it means that you can have spacings of either 100, 50, 200 or 400. Because if there are multiple, it makes it a lot easier to assess to making sure that you've got the correct numbers. And a couple things I like to do as well is break it up into sections. So if I'm looking at reinforcement, I'll look at reinforcement first, but I'll break it up into the flexure reinforcement and maybe come back and do the shear instead of trying to do everything at once, which can be a little bit time consuming. So I'll stay in one area and try and tick off the things that I'm looking for. So if I'm making sure that things of a certain length, I'm measuring it and taking a photo, both of the measurement and the photo of the length being measured. I'm taking a video of just the flexural reinforcement and counting the flexural bars, both top and bottom. Now I'll do a specific area and I'll come back and do the shear reinforcement. Cause sometimes if you try and do each beam from top to bottom, it can be a little bit time consuming. But a lot of time, if you do know the drawings, it's very easy to check as you'll get into a pattern, you know what the shear reinforcement should be at and what the flexural reinforcement should be at and you can just automatically judge it. But also being critical of some of the critical locations. So what are the critical areas? Now, just because it's on the drawing in a certain way, you can also pick up any mistakes or something that we have may have missed. The drawings may not have shown something. So if you see something that wasn't on the drawings, ask why, or if something looks odd, making sure that you're always speaking up. Or if you haven't, potentially pick up a fault that was potentially missed earlier. Then for example, after I've done the reinforcement for a steel drawing, I'd also be looking up at the bolts, making sure all the bolts are installed, having comments on the different connections, making sure stuff is connected properly. But it's constantly similar to when I'm checking drawings, looking for patterns. So if something breaks the pattern that I'm seeing on site, why has it broken the pattern? It may have broken the pattern on the drawings. Now, if there is a reason behind it, trying to look at why. 
So this is really your last point of call before something gets built. It doesn't matter if it was incorrect on the drawings, it's now your time to speak up. So constantly looking for patterns is something that is very beneficial. They will also make your checking quicker, as we said before. When you get into a pattern, you'll know how many bars are across a beam, you'll know how many bars top and bottom, and you'll get a feel so you can check stuff quicker. That's similar with the stirrups or any with the PT. That's a great example of something where you're looking for patterns, making sure the high points are where you're expected to them over supports, and the low points are at mid spans of structures. And if they're not, why not? There may be some reason, but it's definitely worth checking out to making sure that you're checking it effectively. When you're on site as well, it's worth, especially if you've picked up something, is mentioning it to the people that are around you that are actually doing the site inspection with you. As you can say, look, I've noticed this, this is done incorrectly, and explaining how it was meant to be built, as you essentially need to educate the people sometimes about why things are a certain way. Or they may speak up and say, we can't do this because of these specific reasons. That means your design needed a change. They may not have changed it correctly, so it's worth having those discussions when on site. When you do have those discussions, you do want to note that you had a discussion with X and we discussed about this, this, and this, or you directed something to be done specifically if something needed to be done right away. Now, if you're unsure, you don't necessarily need to speak up at that moment, but making sure that you're noting it on your drawings about anything you observed. So when you come back to site and need to have a discussion with another colleague, you can have a discussion about the things that you're critical about and some of the potential changes that they may need to go into to make sure that it's rectified or at least finding out why things were a certain way. Now, after you've done your site visit, it's going back and collating what you observed, any of the missing areas or noting stuff that was incorrect. This will be effectively documenting what you observed, what needed to be changed, and the things that have been done correctly. So you spend a couple of hours on site and you spend many more hours back in the office rewriting that report. It's very time consuming and it can be boring. But this is where I've recently found a new tool that helps save you both time and effort to help produce these reports. And this is a site report builder where it combines AI and speech recognition into a tool to save you both time and effort. It's really simple. All you need to do is grab your phone, hit record and talk over what you've seen. Upload that video and I'll create a quick report of what you observed. So you can either have a single clip or multiple clips that you upload to make that single report. If there needs to be any edits, no sweat. It's also got an online editor that allows you to edit the report. So you can either put in tables, additional text, additional photos, or even change the photo that's uploaded from the video. You can also tailor these reports specifically for your company's needs. And so if you need a specific header, you can have that specific header so it matches your style. So I've got a link in the below description that is an affiliate link that costs nothing to you, but I get a small commission to help this content out. So why don't you make your life easier, save you time and hassle and try it out. Now let's get back to the content. Sometimes, especially if it's your first couple of visits, you wanna be a little bit more thorough in the first couple of visits as well set a tone for the future visits. So your first visit should not be your lenient one. It should be the more stringent one as you're expecting the level of detail that you want them to achieve. And then if the quality ever drops, it's about picking up and being more stringent again to making sure that quality is maintained through the whole construction process. One of the key things that I would recommend a lot of people do, especially when you're starting out that relationship with a builder, is making sure they're actually doing what you've requested. So when you're on site, you may ask them to do something. They go, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, I'll do it. But will they actually do it? Ah, no worries. What you can do as a pro tip is leave the site and then come back in an hour or half an hour or however long it would have taken to rectify the issue to come back to see where they've actually made that change. As sometimes they would say they would do it, but not actually make the specific change that you requested. It's something that you can do to try and keep them honest. They'll always keep them on their toes to make sure that they're actually doing the work that you're expecting them to do. As really, it's your responsibility to make sure it's built properly and it'll be your signature at the end to make sure it's done correctly. If you do have enough details, you shouldn't just rely on photos. Photos are only there for your own record. There's actually a lot of court cases around that where people have signed off on photos because someone can take a really specific photo just showing you what you want to see. Where if you go just outside there, the rectification works potentially weren't done. Similar to the markups of where we use color to emphasize more information, you can also do this in markups. You don't necessarily just have red marks over your drawings for the things you've noticed. The red marks are things that need to be rectified in your drawings. You can also then have other colors such as comments or stuff that you need to verify in different colors. It doesn't really matter what your color scheme is to make sure that you can pass more information to yourself when you get back into the office. Another one is also to use highlighters and have highlights of when you've checked things or potentially when things have been missed. So if you're looking at reinforcement, you can have a red highlighter making sure that something's been missed and needs to be added. Or if you're checking stuff, have a green highlighter to show that you've actually inspected that area and you've seen that the reinforcement was installed correctly. But if you want to bring your designs to the next level, which is something you need to do prior to those site visits, I've got a link to a video here. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, there's two ways that you can do this. You can either become a YouTube or Patreon member. Without the support of my YouTube and Patreon members, this type of content would not be possible. As always, keep learning, 
and I hope to see you next week.